All right, so we are going to be talking about pathology in the last little bit here and learning a little bit more about disease, which is what pathology is all about. So the number one thing we should know is what we mean when we say pathology. Pathology really is just the study of diseases. And so there are different categories of diseases because there's different things that can happen in your body. So we classify diseases really into four main categories. So the first category of disease is what we call an infectious disease. This is essentially something has infected you. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about infectious diseases, but if something infects you really, well, it means something is kind of living inside of you that you don't want to be there. You can also have what's called a deficiency disease. And this we kind of took a look at when we looked at nutrition. Basically, it means that you are missing some nutrition or something in your body. So remember we talked about something like scurvy. We really, it was a lack of vitamin C. So not having enough vitamin C meant that your body wasn't able to produce certain chemical reactions. And so you end up getting a disease from that. Deficiency diseases are quite easy to treat because the treatment is get the thing that you're deficient in and make sure that you can get caught up in it. Um, that being said, in terms of easy to treat, sometimes there are some like um, issues around like um, making sure that people are ready to actually deal with that. Um, you know, in some cases it might be related to eating disorders. So it's making sure people get access to the right um, treatments so that they are actually able to, to start um, dealing with those deficiencies as well. Hereditary diseases, these are ones that you inherit. And so, inherit. And what that means is these are genetic diseases. And we'll take a little bit of a look at genetic diseases, but if you take Bio 30, you get to learn a lot more about genetics. So if that's something you're interested in, really make sure you sign up for Bio 30 next year, because that, that's really a major section of the course is looking at genetics. The other thing that you can have happen is what's called a physiological disease. What this means is something just goes wrong. And it basically means that your body is not functioning properly. There's a lot of reasons this can happen. This could be developed over time. It could be autoimmune. It could be something, you know, like people who are alcoholics, they can eventually have their liver shut down through, through um, uh, basically just damage to their liver. That would be a physiological disease. A similar thing can happen if you're obese, you can end up having damage to your liver. Some people, they may just have like, um, you know, certain things take place, like maybe their body starts attacking a system of, based on their, their immune system, you know, maybe their immune system is just going kind of rampant and, and attacking its own body. And, and that sometimes is a physiological disease. So there's lots of different things that can actually take place. What we're going to focus on in this lecture, though, is one specific type of infectious disease that you probably have been hearing a lot about. So infectious diseases really fit into four major categories. And what we mean when we say infectious disease is a pathogen. And when we say pathogen, what we're really talking about is a foreign living object. They are living inside of your body. Basically, what they are doing is they are using your body to feed, to reproduce, or to get shelter. That's kind of like the three main things that they're doing. And they happen from essentially four different types of organisms. Number one is called a virus. Number two, bacteria, fungi, or parasites. And so there's, those are kind of the four major classes of infectious things that you can have take place. Um, and we'll take a look at what those are a little bit, but in this, we're gonna focus on the virus. So just to give you an idea, 
about size and scale. This is a eukaryotic cell. This would be like a human cell. This is basically anything that's not bacteria is a eukaryotic cell. This right here, this is a prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotic cells, they are bacteria. And if you look really, really carefully, you might notice something right here. Now, what I want you to think about here is scale. Think about size. You know, we, we have to use a microscope in order to see eukaryotic cells, but it, the microscopes we have at school are not good enough to see bacteria. Like they, they just can't zoom in enough in order to see bacteria. Let's take a look at what's happening right here. You can zoom in a little bit more. Here's our prokaryotic cell. You can see it's basically like, this would be a mitochondria. Mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. This is your prokaryotic cell. This is the thing we're taking a look at. Zoom in again. Look at the size of this thing. This thing is tiny in comparison. This thing right here that is so tiny is a virus. That's really what we're taking a look at. And if you look at the size comparison between the two, you can see how small a virus is in comparison to just a bacteria, let alone like a human cell. They are very, very, very small. So what is a virus? Well, a virus is considered to be a biological particle. A lot of people would consider it to be a non-living thing because it cannot reproduce on its own. It is made out of two pieces. It's made out of genetic material. So what we mean when we say genetic material is it's made out of either DNA, or there's a really similar thing to DNA that's called RNA. And there's a lot of RNA based viruses, but they both do the same thing. They carry information and the information they carry is to make proteins. That's the information carried in genetic material, DNA or RNA, is they tell your cell how to make proteins. The other thing that a virus is made out of is it's made out of protein. So it's made out of different proteins um, that um, can then basically house the virus. So inside of the virus, you're going to find your DNA or RNA, and it fits into a part that is called the capsid. So you're going to have essentially a container, and inside of that container, you're going to have DNA or RNA coiled up. And the other thing is you might have some other pieces depending on the type of virus. Different viruses fit into different categories based on their shape. But when a virus causes a disease, it's said to be virulent. So you have a virulent uh, virus that actually is causing a disease. If it doesn't cause a disease right away, we consider that virus to be temperate. Basically, it may cause a disease later on, but it can kind of sit dormant for a little while. And so you can kind of have these two categories where it will eventually cause disease. And that's considered to be temperate or it causes disease right away upon infection. And that would be virulent. Okay, here is a virus you're probably very familiar with. This is a diagram of the coronavirus. So this is like the actual virus itself, I believe is SARS-CoV-2. And so basically what we're saying is it's a variety of a SARS virus. It is a corona style virus. Corona style virus means that it has, corona actually means crown. Um, so there, there's like a constellation called the Corona Borealis, which is the crown of the north. 
uh, the coronavirus. Looks like it is wearing a crown, and that is these little spikes on the outside. And it's the second version of this virus, basically, that we've kind of found. So uh, there's a designation for the virus. This causes the disease COVID-19. So this is the disease is COVID-19, but the virus itself is called SARS-CoV-2. You can see this virus on the inside has the genetic material. So here's your genetic material, and it is housed inside of this red thing. This is called the capsid. So you have your genetic material on the inside. And if we're talking about the SARS-CoV-2 material, um, then it has RNA. It's an RNA-based virus. It also has proteins, and it has different proteins in different places, but essentially it has the S protein, which is the spike protein. This is the thing that attaches onto different parts of your cell. Let's do that in yellow. So, so this is the protein. The other thing about this virus is it has a, a structure that's a little bit different than some viruses where this blue membrane is actually made of lipids. So a lipid is essentially like a fat or a grease almost. And like we learned about in nutrition, which if you are able to actually use soap, soap mixes water and fat or lipids which means that you can actually destroy this virus on the surface of your hands just by using soap because soap essentially breaks the outer shell of the virus and then it causes the dna or the sorry the rna to break down once it's exposed and as soon as the virus is dead then you're able to to deal with it but this is why washing your hands with soap for 20 seconds works because it actually destroys the entire outside of the virus. Now, viruses can infect in two different ways. They can infect in what is called the lytic cycle. And the lytic cycle is the one that you see at the top here, the lytic cycle. So what takes place in the lytic cycle is you have a cell. We're going to start right here. This is going to be number one. A, a virus is going to attach to the outside of a cell and it's going to inject its DNA or RNA. So since we're talking about the coronavirus, we'll, we'll say it's RNA, but it depends on the type of virus you're dealing with. Once the RNA gets inside, then the cell will incorporate it into the DNA. So basically it adds the genetic material to the cell's genetic material. So basically it says, oh, here's a piece of information that I can read. Let's use this piece of information. What this is gonna do is the next step. The next step is it's actually going to read the RNA or the DNA, and it's going to use that to build protein. Now, if you remember what a virus is made out of, a virus is made out of two different pieces. Hold on, I lost my pointer here. A virus is made out of, first of all, number one, DNA or RNA. I know those look like the same, oh, that's an N. DNA or RNA. The other thing they're made out of is protein. So when your cell reads this information and starts building proteins, what it's actually building is viruses. So the instructions that it uses or that it's injecting back in step number one is the instructions on how to build a virus. And your cell reads those instructions and it doesn't know any better. It just says, oh, here's some information I should use and it starts assembling the proteins. And once it assembles the proteins, they connect together to make viruses. And then the viruses, they exit the cell. And when they do that, 
they destroy the cell most of the time on their way out. So now you have these new viruses that are spreading out. They're going to find new cells. Then they're going to inject their DNA. The cell will read it, build proteins, build viruses, exit the cell, so on and so on and so on. There's another thing that can happen, though, and this usually has more to do with temperate viruses, and that is the lysogenic cycle. So what's happening in this is at step number two, when that RNA or DNA gets incorporated in the cell, it basically lays in wait, and then the cell is going to multiply. When it multiplies, it's actually spreading the virus that it has. Every new cell is now going to have this virus, and so then it's going to, oh, I did this the wrong way. So basically, like, the DNA replicates, or the, you get replication, and that's going to spread that information. Then your cell is going to divide. And then you're going to, this is going to be step five, cell is going to multiply, and when that cell multiplies, now you have new cells that have that virus DNA incorporated. And it can just continue through this cycle over and over again in the lysogenic cycle, basically spreading that viral DNA throughout your entire body. And then at any moment, it can leave the lysogenic cycle and go back into the lytic cycle and start manufacturing viruses. So really, some viruses will just use the lytic cycle. Some will use the lysogenic cycle. But eventually, if they're using the lysogenic cycle, they're going to go back and produce more viruses at some point with the lytic cycle. So the two are kind of connected. It depends on the virus and how they're going to work. But that is ultimately how they infect. Now, when you have a virus, typically a virus can't be cured. And so what that means is you can't really destroy a lot of viruses once they get inside of you by using medical treatments. Um, this is why things like antibiotics, if you get sick and they know you have a virus, they can't give you antibiotics because they don't treat viruses what they do, antibiotics, they kill bacteria. And so if you have a virus, you can't use an antibiotic in order to treat it. Instead, what you usually have to do is let your immune system develop a defense. So you kind of have to rely on your humoral and your cell-mediated responses in order to come up with a way to fight that virus. One way that we can stop viruses before anything happens is by using a vaccine, because a vaccine, as we learned in the immune system section, is going to produce a defense to stop you from getting infected. So basically, it's telling your body which um, T and B cells it needs to have in order to recognize and fight the virus that it's going to get infected with. Vaccines are completely safe. Vaccines do not have anything in them that will change the way that your brain chemistry works or they're not going to give you autism or anything like that. Vaccines are totally, completely safe. All vaccines are doing is giving your immune system the means to recognize and fight a virus before it gets infected with it. Some viruses have what we call an antiviral that we can use, and that's a medication. So you can take an antiviral medication, but it does not kill the virus. Instead, what an antiviral does is it makes it hard for the virus to replicate, to make copies of itself, or it makes it hard for the cell to actually get the virus inside. So what you can do is stop the virus from attaching you can maybe stop the virus from getting inside. Endocytosis is a way that viruses enter the, the body, or enter the cell, sorry. You may actually stop the production of proteins inside the cell. Another thing you can do is stop the body or the cells from reading DNA. 
Um, and sometimes you can slow the production of proteins. Dep it all depends on what antiviral medication you use. You may have heard in the news, people talk about remdesivir. So remdesivir is an antiviral that people are using to help treat COVID-19. And what remdesivir does is it actually slows the um, RNA production. So when it gets red, or like when your remdesivir is this drug that goes into your cells, when it's in there, it actually, this is kind of the step that it's stopping, is it's stopping making RNA. And if you don't make as much RNA, then you're not going to be able to produce as many proteins. And ultimately what you're doing is you're slowing virus production. And if you slow down virus production, then what you're really doing is you're giving your body enough time to develop a treatment and develop an, an, an immune response that will stop the virus without the virus spreading as quickly. So really what you're doing when you're using a lot of antivirals is you slow the spread in the body. It doesn't mean that you stop the infection. It doesn't mean that you are going to do anything really, but really what you're doing is you're giving your immune system time. That's the purpose of an antiviral. Because for most viruses, you need to let your immune system do the work. And so if you don't have a vaccine to kickstart the immune system, you need to let your body have a chance to actually fight it. And so that's why you need to have some antivirals in cases like this is in order to slow down virus production to give your body enough time to develop a way to fight it. So that's just an introduction into how viruses work and how one type of infectious disease can infect your body and some ways that we treat it. So thanks for watching. See you next, uh, next lesson.